What's up, everyone? It's Scotty with MoneyVest. So markets here continue to trade pretty much near all-time highs with the Tesla stock, of course, pushing up very nicely up over 6% on the day. I did a video on Tesla earlier. They are going to be reporting their delivery numbers for the second quarter any time now. Pretty much it's going to be suppo it's supposed to be released on Tuesday morning. So I, I have a flight to catch in, th in about three hours. So I'll be heading over to the airport after this video, but I'll keep you guys updated and posted with where we are with the delivery numbers, production numbers, and of course, how Tesla stock is responding uh, pre-market. And remember, tomorrow on Wednesday, we have a half day. Uh, the markets will close early in observance of 4th of July. And Thursday, the markets are going to be closed altogether. So there will be no trading. So it's going to be a a bit of a shorter week for the markets here. So hope you all enjoy this video and find it helpful. Make sure that you drop a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're just joining us for the first time and links to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below. So if you want to join, be a part of our MoneyVest beta launch that's now coming up in less than a week. Link's going to be down below with limited spots left and there is a 51% discount right now that you can take advantage of and it's not going to be lasting forever. So link's going to be down below. We'd love to have you on board and you will be able to play around with our entire platform, analyze over 17,000 stocks, do your own comprehensive in-depth fundamental analysis, individual stock analysis, look at analyst estimates, plot a lot of fundamental data on visual charts and graphs, and go back as far as 20 years worth of historical financial data. And speaking of 4th of July, we've got a massive sale on all of our educational courses. So the coupon code is going to be July 4. You can apply this on our Teachable website and enroll in any of the courses. We've got fundamental analysis, technical analysis, options trading and psychology of investing in money and markets. Every course is going to be 60% off and all the bundles are also going to be 60% off. So this is again, one of the biggest sales we've had. It expires on July 5th, coupon code July 4, which you can apply and of course, take advantage of this and you will have lifetime access to all these courses. So link's going to be down below. So first things first, I really wanted to address this sort of right here. And this is the market's concentration in the big three, the max seven and the top 10. So these are the three category of stocks that I wanted to address because as we know, the markets continue to trade higher and higher trade pretty much at all time highs on the back of a lot of technology companies, a lot of big companies that are pushing and of course are carrying a lot of the weight for rest of the market and the S&P 500. So the big three is your NVIDIA, Microsoft and Apple uh, makes up for almost 20% of the entire S&P 500 market cap, which is again, quite significant because if you do the math here, three divided by 500, that's only 0.6%. That's less than 1% of the entire S&P 500. If you do the same thing for max seven, we're talking 1.4%. And if you do 10 of the S&P 500 companies, we're talking 2%. So really, I mean, this is the idea that I want to bring home here is that 0.6% of the S&P 500 controls almost 20% of the S&P 500 in terms of its market cap. And when it comes to Magnificent 7, so the top seven big tech companies here, 33%. So just under 33% of market cap is controlled by Magnificent 7 companies, and that's only 1.4% of the index itself. And finally, if you come down to top 10, if you include for another three companies that are within the top 10, which is you're going to be Eli Lilly, Broadcom, and Berkshire Hathaway, that's 36%. So over a third of the S&P 500 is controlled by just 2% of the company. So that again, goes to show a little bit more about market concentration risk and how much dependent we are as a market, as an index, as an aggregate index, how much we are dependent on these companies. Because if they start to do uh, not so well, they start to tr you know trail behind or if they start to consolidate sideways or taper off in their growth and start pulling back, how much of the risk market carries because its dependencies on these top 10 Magnificent 7 and Big 3 companies. So something to keep in mind because a lot of the markets, when we look at the overall markets on aggregate basis, uh, you know, one of the things that we also look at, I'm going to come back to some of these analysis here. So one of the things that we look at is the S&P 500 valuation. And right now, since we are 5475, uh, based on 2024 earnings estimates of $247, uh, we've got a 22 times price earnings multiple. 2025, we're trading at just under 20. And last year, we're trading at a little bit over 24. So these are market valuations, which you know you could argue that are somewhat fair to a little bit more on the expensive side, because the last 10, 15, 20 year averages have been around the 18 to 19, you know, a P multiple mark. And we are obviously at over 22. That just goes to show that, okay, markets are somewhat trading at levels that are or could be considered as a bit more expensive. So not saying the markets can go higher. Uh, that's not the idea. That's not the point here. They certainly can. But 
it's just about risk and reward. That's the whole idea is just trying to assess and understand how good or how favorable, how not so good or unfavorable the risk reward is. And if you come over to volatility, 12.22 is where we are. We're back in the rare territory for the volatility here is based on 11 percentile is where we are and days under 13 or days under 10 very very low at 68 a days under 20 is 61 percent of the time so majority of the times two-thirds of the times the volatility is below 20 and the markets keep pushing higher and higher but the moment it gets down to really low levels we're talking 11 12 10 or sub 10 uh it, it's really important for us to be aware and be understanding of the fact that okay vix is low and it's time to go if the vix does spike there could be a negative correction there could be a bit of a dip or a small pullback in the S&P 500. That's just how the markets work. Now, coming over to some of the other news pieces, uh, Adobe faces a troubling FTC lawsuit for trapping customers. Uh, I did a video on Adobe, and this is actually quite interesting because FTC filed a lawsuit on June 17, claiming that Adobe fails to frequently disclose to its customers that when they sign up for its annual paid monthly subscription plan, they are making a year-long commitment and an early termination fee uh, can cost them hundreds of dollars, eventually trapping them into retaining their subscription. So Adobe, uh, as we know, has already been you know, very, very uh, strong in terms of its fundamentals, and they do have a very strong pricing model. So one of my biggest problems, or I would say concerns with Adobe as a consumer, was that they've got a lot of pricing power and they have increased the cost significantly. So now their annual paid monthly subscription plan is fifty four ninety nine, uh, which gives you access to all the suite of products. However, uh, you know, that price has gone up significantly over the years. I mean, I've been an Adobe customer for well over three to four years, and I've seen this cost go from $20, $30 per month to now... I'm paying over $60 a month to Adobe. Um, so that, of course, you know, definitely is a lot of pricing power and they continue to increase their cost associated with having the subscription plan. But as an investor that continues to suggest that, okay, the company's got a lot of pricing power, they've got a moat, they've got user base, which is willing to pay because they can't find a reasonable alternative or something that is equally good uh, at, at the same cost. And, and again, offers a lot of different suite of products such as Adobe PDF, Photoshop, Illustrator, Premiere Pro. I mean, the list goes on and on. Uh, one more thing I wanted to mention is NVIDIA's catalyst. So there's been a lot of price resets on NVIDIA uh, and uh, a lot of people are expecting NVIDIA to get up to over $4 trillion. So NVIDIA launched its new Blackwell system of AI powering processor this spring and the group continues to hold a commanding share of the market share for chips and systems needed to build out the massive data systems that so-called hyperscalers such as meta platforms amazon and microsoft will use uh, to further their new technology ambitions and blackwell products are more expensive than their h100 h200 predecessors but provide more power and more energy efficient and their introduction, however, had raised concerns about so-called air pocket in sales as customers canceled orders of the legacy chips and waited for the new lines of processors as well. But nonetheless, um, you know, this is, again, going to catapult the company uh, to almost $4 trillion is what many people are expecting. That's, again, going to be a nice 20% gain or a little bit under 20% gain from where it is at the moment. Now, coming back over to the markets, uh, again, by the way, this right here is the entire platform, which you can access, do a lot of analysis, in-depth, comprehensive, fundamental breakdowns on individual companies, including our very own money best metrics, our calculators, our financial models, where you can calculate the intrinsic value and the price targets on individual stocks. So again, link's going to be down below if you want to join. Of course, take advantage of that huge discount um, that we have going on for the next week as well. So 51% off right now at the moment. Now, coming back over to the market, so starting with S&P 500. So a little bit of a push higher 27 basis points as it continues to consolidate a little bit sideways however there is some negative divergence with the macd also crossing below that signal line so the idea is to be a bit more cautious and careful here um, there could be some support sitting right over here at 5440 as you can see that the SP continues to validate that level on the four hour chart it's a little bit more clear on the 30 minute time frame it's going to be a bit more clear as previous resistance acting as a reasonable support and the moment we let's say break down below this level wouldn't be surprised to see lows of 5329 down to 5265 down to as low as 5187 so those right there are going to be some key critical areas of support to watch for the s p 500 and that's a reasonable two to as much as five percent pullback slash dip for the market can the markets keep going higher absolutely 
We've got a lot of catalysts coming up in the second half of 2024. We've got the election day on November 5th. Um, and then we've got the FOMC meeting, um, you know, on the on those same days. So November 7th, we've got the FOMC. Um, and then, of course, two more summary of economic projections, six more inflation reports, six more unemployment reports. So a lot of really interesting data, of course, to be released. And a lot of interest rate cut expectations are also priced into the market at the moment for the second half of 2024. So just got to be a bit more careful. The entire year, I do still believe the markets are going to close out on a green note. We're still going to be up on the year, but it's just uh, having that understanding that, okay, uh, what is going to be the next six months looking like, right? Because the first six months were so strong. Uh, the S&P 500, of course, pushing up really well. By the way, this is something that I posted on my Instagram, so definitely do connect with me over there as well. Uh, but this right here is uh, what I mentioned on the Instagram, uh, showing my mid-year performance update up almost 22% with the S&P up a little bit over 15%. And I also asked everyone for the next six months, are they bullish or bearish? So that's also available uh, on my Instagram. Connect with me there if you are interested, uh, but a little bit of a mid-year update for everyone as well. Now, coming back over to some of the more important stuff. So volatility here continues to be really, really low, trading down to 12.67. Uh, again, keep a close eye inside this red rectangle. It's not very often that we see the volatility trade down to as low as 11 or 10 or sub 10. So the lower it gets, the more, uh, the, the, the higher the probability for us to see uh, a bit of a spike because of low percentiles on the VIX. And again, because of the negative correlation with the S&P, it's not unusual to see a bit of a pullback or a small dip in the S&P 500. Uh, coming back over to crude oil prices, we're starting to see a bit of a breakout on crude. So that is something to keep in mind because that is eventually going to be affecting inflation. And we're now finally above $83, $84 a barrel. So we'll go ahead and turn this level back into a support because this has been a absolutely on point analysis where we got a head and shoulders breakdown, consolidation, breakdown further, validating that support very nicely and then getting bought back up very well and then breaking out to a new support level here and the next target and resistance stays put at $87 a share for crude oil. Coming over to the 10-year yields chart, so let's talk a little bit more about interest rates. We're starting to see a bit of a recovery on the 10-year treasuries. This right here is a very, very key area that we talked about in our previous video can act both as a resistance or a support depending on where we're trading. Uh, and of course, the, the the historical resistance we talked about in our previous videos back in April was 4.75%, a little bit of that lower highs and lower lows, then of course, getting bought right back up here for the treasuries at 4.2% pushing right back up, of course, causing the bond market to once again come down. So TLT, uh, you'll notice continues to sell off down about 2% uh, yesterday. And again, another 1.86% uh, the day prior to that. And then TMF, since it's a more leveraged ETF, selling off more aggressively down over 5% as well. Again, resistance was around that $67 per share mark. I remember getting exiting uh, TMF with a decent profit in the $55 to $57 per share. For me, a very strong support for TMF sits around here at $37. And then another level to keep in mind around here at $43 for TMF. So those right there are going to be a couple levels to watch for this particular ETF. Uh, coming over to the NASDAQ now, so ticker symbol IXIC, pushing up over 83 basis points, so lots of momentum for the NASDAQ, pushing up to almost 18,000 again, support level is going to stay put at 17k, down to as low as 16,000 points, down to as low as, of course, inside these areas of very strong demand at 14, down to as low as 12.6. I don't, I don't believe that we're going to see those levels anytime soon, but these right here, the first initial levels are possible, because that's only going to be a pullback of 4 to as much as 9%, something that is possible, not out of the picture, not out of the question for the markets. But again, the momentum is still in our favor. So we could easily break out to new highs beyond 18,000. So that is going to be a reasonable resistance to keep in mind, at least in the foreseeable future. So that's where we are uh, with the entire market. And uh, a more individual stock technical analysis, I will be doing that on Magnificent 7 and some of the other companies in another video, in a more dedicated video. But hope you all enjoyed this video, found it helpful. Make sure that you drop a like and subscribe to the channel. The bottom line is markets trading back up to all-time highs. We've got lots of really interesting catalysts coming up, more individual stock catalysts also coming up. So keep that in mind. But volatility being low, I'm not super aggressive in this market, but I will be, of course, eventually when the VIX uh, is starting to spike. And more importantly, our money vest index which you can see over here so let's just bring that over i'm gonna bring this through like this so money vest index right now at 3.59 just starting to see a bit of a pullback but again we need to see lower and lower levels inside this green sort of areas 
where we can start deploying more cash and be more aggressive from a market standpoint. The risk reward is going to be a lot more favorable in and around these levels. So hope you all enjoyed this video, found it helpful. Make sure you drop a like and subscribe to the channel. If you're just joining us for the first time, I would really appreciate that. And don't forget, you can access this entire MoneyVest platform starting next week. Uh, we're going to be doing the beta launch and uh, sign up on Patreon. There's a 51% discount right now that we're offering and you'll have access to all these amazing features and more functionality, more tools, more models and calculators over time that we're going to be building for you. So link's going to be down below. And also don't forget a massive sale across the board on our all of our courses, 60% off coupon code July 4 expires on 5th July. Link's going to be down below. So always happy investing. I'll see you all in the next video.